Two new Apple products just leaked, and they're the AI devices of the future. Hello and welcome everyone to the All Future Podcast. Glad you're here. Glad you're here to hear us talk about tech. Uh, if you subscribe, thank you. If you have it, think about it. I don't know. Just give it. Just give it just a, a just, thought. Yeah, just, just give it a th- passing thought, maybe. Especially if you would like to hear more about weird tech coming up that I don't think is going to happen. So when it happens, everyone can say that I'm wrong. And that's one of the things we're going to talk about today yeah. with these Apple products that are possibly coming up. And there's really a couple categories here. Stuff that is almost certainly coming and it has been leaked and we kind of look at, namely iPhone 16 and what it looks like and differences it's going to have. Mm-hmm. But then some uh, a- AR, uh, smart AI slash device things that Apple's doing. Yep. And really, ha- both of them trying to solve the problem of what's the perfect form factor for that AI always on device. Ryan, what, what, what do these rumors say so I can say I disagree with them? <laughs> well, uh, this week we had a bunch of rumors going into Apple's WWDC event about what features were coming there, but then also some rumors of the actual products that they're going to enable with these features. So right now, uh, we see these AI things being enabled on a phone, and you see it through to its fruition on a screen. If it does it wrong, you take over and do it. But the goal of these things is that you don't actually need to see it because you trust that it actually does it correctly. So Mark Gurman, classic Apple uh, guy. Classic Gurman coming with some rumors. <laughs> has said the next wave of devices from Apple will not be phones. And the first one is AirPods with a camera on it, or cameras. And this is still kind of hard to imagine what this would mean, but essentially, you know, you already have a little stick hanging out of your AirPods. I think it would just mean there's cameras looking around you, or I don't know, even just like a three, it gets a 360 image and can see everything in your environment. So you're talking to it, and the voice assistant is good enough that it's in your ear. It's seeing everything around you. It's kind of an implementation like the thing in her. Mm. Uh, where it's in its his pocket. And he doesn't have to look at it most of the time. He just has an earpiece. That's the idea here. You don't need a screen, but it's seeing around you and uh, getting context for everything you're asking. Guys, I just can't see. There's so many weird things with this. Mm-hmm. One, how even a small camera that's not designed to capture like you know high megapixels images, that's just a sensor camera, if you will, an optical sensor, there's still some weight and size issues there if you think like airpods are probably already as small as you can effectively make them right Mm -hmm. between the speaker drivers and everything and the microphones like they're already fairly small or it's 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 it's, it's packed already i guess what i'm trying to say right so to add anything to it there's no extra room you're gonna have to add space to it and i guess i can see what you're saying right let's say you maybe extend the ear stalk stick i don't know what you call the thing that comes out of it and maybe there's some kind of little camera on there but then you're also going to talk about a battery requirement on this thing. Mm-hmm. How, I mean, a sense... Because it would have to be looking all the time. That's the thing, right? Like, for this to make sense, it at least needs to be on a lot, mm. right? Like, it, it can't just, like, take, like, a one still image. It's got to... If you're going to do a real multimodal thing, it's going to have to have, like, you know, video capabilities. Yeah. And again, it's not... Re- it, you know, it's in theory not recording some HD video you're meant to watch back later. It's just recording enough so it can see its environment and what's going on. But that's it. So you've got the space requirement. You've got the battery requirement. Mm-hmm. Then I think you have a, uh, what the hell is this thing requirement? <laughs> right? like it's a, it's a, it's a, because it, it's going to be one of those things to how do you get people on board with using this? And it's going to have to be pretty cool. It's going to have to be pretty advanced for people to like it. Uh, and the devices of the future, man. Sure, the sure, future. sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, okay. If we're, uh, you know, in 70 years, they can make this thing perfect and use it like this. Well, yeah, but that's not the timeline. Yeah, yeah. It would be earlier than that. Yeah, so I just, it just seems like... And look, I, I'm sure they have prototyped this and talked about this. And I get like... If you're like just having that kind of blue sky brainstorming session and you're like, hey, what's a wearable AI device? How we can do it? And someone goes, ah, oh, what if we put a camera on AirPods? And we're like, oh, cool. Yeah, let's try that out. Let's see what that's like. Mm-hmm. So that makes a lot of sense to me. This seems like a little bit of a stretch to me, but uh, they have pluses and minuses to all these things. And the other thing they're talking about, 
glasses, which I think yeah. make a little bit more sense. I think that's the one that makes the most sense because we already see the Apple Vision and how good that could be. And in a future form factor, or even just a really simplified form factor where it's a very basic display on a pair of glasses, but it can see and understand your environment, that would probably be really great. And mm -hmm. then you're engaging with it with your voice, but you still have the text prompting you because it's it just helps mm -hmm. you know that it's actually understanding what you're saying. Well, then even the thing that doesn't really have a, I mean, essentially how the meta glasses work right now, right? Which is the camera and it's talking to you, and it's multimodal, something like that. And glasses just offer a lot more space for battery, room for cameras. I mean, and if you look at how these things are built, you essentially on the the arms of the glasses, what do you call mm -hmm. that? The legs of the glass? I don't know, yeah, whatever the like... thing that, that holds it on your face. I don't know mm -hmm. what it's called, but, uh, but lots of room in there to put stuff, whether it's, you know, circuitry to actually make this thing work, batteries, other sensors, speakers. There's just a lot more room in that than in this AirPod kind of form mm -hmm. factor. And so, but some people don't like to wear glasses. Yeah. So I could see people don't like to wear glasses. The AirPods probably less maybe distracting for people. That's, that's the way I think about it. I definitely am one of those people that forget I have AirPods in sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just kind of, I'm like, oh, wait, my AirPods are in until I forgot they were there. Yeah. So I, that part makes sense to me. I'm just curious as what the what's the implementation of that, mm -hmm. and so well these things both are, uh, yeah yeah I don't think they're coming this fall or something yeah. you know like, it's a little ways out the glasses I think make a little bit more sense to me but they uh, the bigger question here is I don't know if these things still even need to exist yet at all. And that's what we're finding, especially with something, I mean, we just saw with the Humane Pen. Let's say the Humane Pen worked 100%. It mm -hmm. did everything it was supposed to do. You would still have trouble people adopting that because they're like, ah, well, my phone also does this. Mm -hmm. And it's not that big a deal for me to pull my phone out the pocket. Like the Whatever this, the AI wearable, whatever you want to call it, it's got to be so good that not only does it, you know, work, it has to like be a league above the phone so that it could justify me paying for it and not having to just pull my phone out of my pocket. Cause that's already, that's free, right? Like, mm -hmm. so it's like, how much is this time worth to me pulling the phone out? Maybe it's worth an extra 200 bucks a year. Maybe it's worth 500 bucks a year. I don't know what these devices are going to cost. Right. But that's, I think the bigger question here is do these things even need to exist? Apple's going to have to sell consumers on that. Yeah. I think the probably path that gets people converted is when the features we just saw them announce at WWDC are getting good enough to where you pull out your phone, you ask it to do something, and you're actually just holding it and watching it do it, and then you put it back. And then a lot of your interaction is literally just talking to it and then putting it away and then talking to it and putting it away. And then it's like, what if you don't have to pull it out and put it away? You still do the talking, but you get a little feedback on your glasses That's or you get it just a voice in your ear. An excellent point, right? And I think there's a couple of interesting things with that. One, that's what we saw with the Apple Watch. Why mm -hmm. did people start adop adopting the Apple Watch? It's because, oh, like, that, that was really cool. Just, like, check things on your wrist. It, like, it actually had this huge convenience factor that all of a sudden that price was worth it to not having to pull, pull out the phone. Mm -hmm. So when can these things start closing that gap? And, yeah, I talk about this all the time, this idea of a post-app world where we don't need apps. We don't need to open the apps anymore because the AI is doing it all for us. Yeah. So once that... It's kind of implemented. It's almost exactly what you're talking about, right? Like, oh, pulling my phone out doesn't even make sense because when I pull it out, I yeah, I'm just watching the AI do everything. Why am I even opening this at yeah. all? You know, I like picturing all of these in like the worst possible form factors. So like the the AirPods, it like when it needs to see something, like a little thing extends out of them to look <laughs> around, or the glasses. Because of like the Apple Vision, how they have a separate battery, mm -hmm. the glasses actually have one of those like straps around the back that hang down <laughs> yeah. to keep it on your neck, and that's the battery. Or you have to wear a hat. I don't know. That is we can just... design some ugly stuff for sure. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Uh... But in the meantime, a lot of these AI features, the first version of them, are coming to current Apple devices, and then will probably be extra featured at Apple's whenever their iPhone event is for the iPhone 16. And we've recently seen some new leaks for the iPhone 16. Yes, and uh, no surprise there. It looks a lot like the iPhone 15. Mm -hmm. uh, the kind of the major rumor right now is that the next cycle is going to be the major refresh. So the iPhone 17 is going to have some kind of more major outside differences. The 
really, with the exception on the regular iPhone 16, the lens placement, mm-hmm. it's. Uh, I don't think you would really notice a difference at all in these things. They're going to be in different colors, obviously. But when you look at these dummies that are out there in the wild, it's. I mean, it looks. It's an iPhone 15, really, especially mm-hmm. in the pros. Like, it's if you just paint or get the same color. I don't think anyone could tell just by looking at these things that there's any kind of major, major differences. Yeah. When you look closely, though, apparently the bezel is going to be one of the smallest ever, like, in a device. And so that's the record that Apple's going to try to talk about, the smallest bezel ever on (laughs) any device, the best screen, that type of thing. And it's going to be on the Pro and the Pro Max, which is going to get a bigger screen. So it's actually going to be a little heavier than this 15 is currently. And it's going to get 6.3 and 6.9 inch screens. But yeah, apparently that bezel is 1.153 millimeters wide, which articles are saying this measurement is the closest yet to a borderless borderless sci-fi dream factor. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, I guess (laughs) if it's the smallest one, it is the closest we've Mm -hmm. ever been. I'm not even sure. Like this is the bezelless thing at this point. Like this, they're so small. Yeah. Like, are we really noticing this stuff at all? Even like, is this having some major effect on people? I know, like. Yeah, the yeah, iPhone 3GS, it's like, oh, well, these bezels are kind of ugly. But now we're almost to the point where it's full edge-to-edge screen. Mm-hmm. This does, like, you know, bump it out a little bit more. Yeah, this uh, is a comparison photo of before and after, which it's like, yeah, it's noticeable. But it, does that make a difference to well, my this experience? Fo- this photo's blown up, too. We're seeing it like this would be like a 10-inch yeah. phone or something on the <laughs> display we're looking at here. So... These are the kind of things is Apple's got to talk about something. Apple's got to talk about this phone for 45 minutes to an hour mm-hmm. and say all the new stuff in it. If they're like, hey, we even made the bezel smaller. That's always, that's slow hanging fruit form, right? Yeah. Like, especially on a year that's not a big upgrade year. It's something new to talk about. D- cool, cool. I think the, the underlying tech of this is cool too because it has, you know, edge touch rejection, kind of smart rejection stuff. So like how that works is kind of interesting. That's kind of a cool tech. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't think any of these... Cosmetic changes are going to sell iPhones. What's going to sell iPhones is if they have some of these new AI features. Are and by AI, I mean Apple intelligence, not artificial yeah, intelligence, not that artificial <laughs> yeah. crap, not the artificial stuff. We're only doing Apple intelligence. Are they going to have Apple intelligence features that are only going to be on the newest phones? And they're going to use some kind of little tap dancing, say, "Oh, well, you need the bigger processor to do this crazy image generation thing or something." So that might be what really they're hoping for to sell these new units is go, mm-hmm. hey, like, I, we know it doesn't look that different, but it can do stuff that's light years ahead of yeah. what the old phones are doing. That will be an interesting thing going forward as well is the balance between how much more hardware we actually need when the AI capability is getting so much better. Because one of the things for the non-pro iPhone is they're vertically aligning the cameras. And apparently that's going to, they're going to go with like a smaller camera bump with the flash outside of the camera bump. But then it's going to enable spatial video on the all of the the iPhones that they sell, essentially. But then also at the event for Vision OS 2, they talked about how you can convert your photos to spatial photos. So I'm wondering, do we actually really need that capability? How good is the AI going to be automatically making you spatial videos or photos that you that look just as good as if you took them, so you don't actually need that feature? I mean, the same exact thing happened with portrait mode, right? Mm-hmm. Like portrait mode at first needed two photos to fake the depth, or two lenses rather, to fake the depth of field. And now you can do it all in software. Mm-hmm. You know, there's there's camera phones out there or, or phone cameras out there that just have the one lens element and can still do, you know, portrait style photos. Yeah. So yeah, the AI is going to keep getting better and better at this stuff. Obviously it's assisted though with actually having the physical data that always helps it out and makes it a little better. Mm -hmm. Um, But, and then there's maybe an argument to say like, well, if it is doing it in software and AI, it's not real. You know, it's extrapolating what you would look like slightly to the side, but that's not really what you look like slightly Mm -hmm. to the side. So, so if you want the, a more, authentic uh true death experience you're going to need these multiple cameras Mm -hmm. but again like this is uh, the question is how do you from apple's perspective i think is we got to sell these things what are the features that will sell phones and how can we market that effectively yeah and we they demoed quite a bit of things at wwdc but Still feels like it was scratching the surface a little if they're enabling this stuff system wide. So it seems like there's going to be a good amount that they demo when the new iPhone comes out. And then 
I'm almost sure there's going to be something that they're like. And then this feature, which is really cool, is only available on the iPhone 16 because of the new A whatever chip it is yeah. at that point. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that's almost certainly that's what's going to happen. And that's, I mean, that's what Apple has always done. Like the, that's how the 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 rumor and Apple cycle works is they you see the OS at WWDC and then they kind of show you more things it'll do or things that it does even better if you buy their newest products at the iPhone event. Mm -hmm. A thing we didn't talk about, and it's not really in this rumor cycle, but a thing that I always bring up is adding sensors to the watch, Yeah, which I think m might be a little better because one, people are already used to having it. And I don't know if we actually need this always on AI sensor that, that people seem to be kind of pitching with these glasses and things like that. Uh, one, it's... I just don't think you actually need AI that much in your daily life to have some kind of multimodal system that's always on. Two, I think there is a little bit of a creep factor with it, even yeah. if there's not. Like, even if it's just a pure sensor, if you have a camera lens sitting on your glasses, or even weirder, coming out your ear, people are going to go, hey, man, are you recording me? What's, what's going yeah, on it's here? It's like, no, I'm not, but actually, technically, my technically, AI is I looking am, yeah, at The you. AI is scanning your face right now. Yeah, and I'm like, going to ask questions about it and your reactions later, but it's... Yeah, <laughs> right? So I think if you put those sensors on the watch, you kind of it's more obvious. Like, I hold up my watch, and maybe it has a little camera here on the side, and I can directly talk to it, mm -hmm. and I can say, hey, translate this menu. And it, it, does, it, it actually just activated Siri to do that. <laughs> um... It probably would have done nothing. Just <laughs> I would have been like, I can't do that. So, yeah. uh, but if it had a sensor and I was looking at a menu, maybe it could do it. So I kind of like that form factor is maybe a little more deliberate. I don't know if that's perfect either, though. There's a lot of... Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, this is a problem... I don't know if it's a problem to solve because we're kind of inventing the problem as a mm -hmm. society. But I think it's something that tech companies want to crack. They want to crack what is the next category of device that we can sell as we start to get more into a post smartphone world as well like as smartphones sales have seemed to kind of plateau i think adding these ai features are gonna boost them up a little but eventually a rectangular glass of metal thing in your pocket can only be a rectangular glass of metal thing in your pocket right there's it's there's some next stage of this evolution that we haven't really figured out yet that i think tech companies are hungry to find yeah and i just don't know if any of these things are really even in the right direction I think all of this stuff is going to be determined by what people are comfortable with and not even necessarily what you personally are comfortable with, but what you're comfortable experiencing from another party. Mm -hmm. So I, when you were talking about the camera always recording, I was thinking about the fact that when I flew with the Apple Vision like a week ago, I didn't even realize like it has cameras all over it. So there's cameras <laughs> seeing everything. And the weirdest part about that experience wasn't my experience. It was me engaging with other people, noticing it or saying something mm -hmm. to me. And then, yeah, it's not recording those with those cameras. It's doing a pass through, but it's, it is pointing cameras constantly. Mm -hmm. Like the guy next to me had a camera face towards him the whole time. I didn't even think about that. Absolutely. Right. And then right now it's, these things are so new that people don't even really know what they're doing. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah, uh, you were saying last week, you talked about like people didn't know that you could see them with it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they didn't know about the past. Yeah. They didn't know. Yeah. This tech is so new, but once everyone's more familiar with that tech, it's you, you people are going to know, Hey, this, this dude's, this guy's got camera pointing at me right mm -hmm. now, you know? So, so we have, so you actually doing this, it's more of a choice and they actually know it's happening as opposed to it. still deliberate. It's like pulling out your phone now. People mm -hmm. know like, Oh wait, you got your phone out. Are you recording? Like it's, yeah. it's so much more obvious than if it's just on a always on your face wearable device, you don't really know what's happening. And if you look at you know, years ago now, Google glass, the way they did it, there was a little like indicator light mm -hmm. that went on when it was actively recording but that was different because that was recording really to take pictures and record things that wasn't really, for the most part, doing recording as a sensor. Yeah. Which is what these things are kind of pitching they're going to be. So that's an always scanning the room kind of situation, especially in a glasses where it's trying to maybe like motion track a map in front of you or something. That means that's, that optical sensor is it's recording its environment to figure mm -hmm. that out. It's always on. And yeah, like it's that something that we really want around. I don't know. 
Yeah, that is the question. <laughs> but uh, Apple is looking into their next-gen devices. Right now, it is the iPhone 16. is the very obvious one, and that's just going to keep going down the AI train. But when they're talking next generation of devices, it really just means the next thing that isn't just an iteration. It's the next thing that is entirely new past the Apple Vision, definitely past the Apple Car, since that has been canceled <laughs> in a big way. Um, so we could be seeing AirPods. We could be seeing... AR glasses of some sort, but either way, it's enabled with AI. So whatever Apple's working on next, it's going to align with what we just saw at WWDC with AI. And we'll probably buy it. 